USC custodians are rallying for better wages. We spoke with a few to learn more about what they hope to accomplish. Electric cars could be the new normal. We talked to an expert to see how more electric cars can help save lives. And the first ever anti-lynching law marks a major step for civil rights. Annenberg TV News is next. Voting is now underway for the USG elections. Find out how you can cast your ballot. Gas prices are on the rise and the conflict between Russia and the Ukraine is likely to make things worse. We'll explain. And a popular local park gets a million dollar makeover. See what people in the community have to say about it. At least 100 USC custodians protest on campus, demanding better wages. How does USC throw an Earth Week party? They plan it. I'm Marilyn Parra coming up with more earthy details. So in honor of the Festival of Books, Lupe Yerenas is giving us a special edition of CD Scoop. Lupe? Hall of Fame NFL running back Eric Dickerson, who with his memoir, Watch My Smoke, a story giving us an inside look at how he became an LA Rams legend. The LA County homeless count is underway. Let's go to our reporter, Liza Monasabian, who is live at one of the volunteer sites. I'm here in South Robertson where tonight, starting at 8 p.m., volunteers will gather to count the number of unhoused people living in Los Angeles County. Time now for this week's Elevate. Reporter Ella joins us with two experts about why watching TV can actually be good for your mental health. Now, if your parents were anything like mine, they probably used to tell you that watching too much TV was lazy or unproductive, or like my mom used to say, it turned your brain into mashed potatoes. USC custodians say they are frustrated with the pay increase the university has offered them. Good evening, I'm Sydney Charles. And I'm Cassie Esparza. As many as 100 workers are demanding to be heard. <laughs> USC custodians chanted for justice by Tommy Trojan. They're asking for higher wages after getting an increase of $1 over the next three years. They marched down Truesdale Parkway chanting, Si se puede. Yes, we can in English. Volunteers handed out signs near the village where they continue to rally for a living wage. Some of them have been with the university for over 25 years. It's ridiculous what they are offering us because we are in a university, I think one of the richest ones in the world. And it's not fair that even being essential workers, they have us at the very bottom. The cost of living is very high, and I believe that with the minimum we are getting, we cannot afford to bring food to our table. I really like my job, but like my colleagues say, we are here to achieve something better. But instead of improving, we are going backwards. <laughs> Los Angeles City Council member Kevin DeLeon came by to show his support. He wanted to make sure custodians' voices were heard. They deserve a dignified salary. I know negotiations are going forward right now. I just wanted to sort of add my voice to make sure that we don't leave these workers behind in the city that's already just polarized between the haves and have-nots. We need to elevate all Angelinos, not just some Angelinos. Custodians said this is the lowest pay increase they've had, about half of what they usually receive. They're asking for the support of students and staff as they continue negotiations. LA residents can now leave their COVID-19 vaccination cards at home. The LA City Council voted today to lift the mandate requiring proof of vaccination at indoor businesses, concerts, and large events. This follows the mask mandate that was lifted three weeks ago. Here at USC, this could mark the end of Trojan Check, the university's way of checking students and faculty's vaccination status. The American Lung Association released a new report naming LA as one of the top metro areas where electric cars could help boost overall health. Reporter Tatum Larson shows us how less air pollution could improve lives. Air pollution in the U.S. is a serious problem according to a new report zeroing in on healthy air. Today, 4 in 10 Americans live in communities with high levels of air pollution. 
The report notes that the switch to zero-emission vehicles by 2035 would prevent over 100,000 premature deaths in the U.S. The largest impact on overall public health is air pollution increases. We see small increases in a really wide variety of health, adverse health outcomes from developmental outcomes, low birth weight babies, developmental issues as children grow up, um, respiratory issues. The historic Felix of Chevrolet dealership on Figueroa has seen a steady rise in sales of electric vehicles. All the cars you see right here lined up are all uh, electric Chevy Bolts. The manager of Felix of Chevrolet says the owners have been working towards making zero emission vehicles more accessible to the local community. Many people don't buy electric cars because they had no place to charge and they had no infrastructure. But now drivers have one more reason to buy electric cars. Zeroing in on Healthy Air Report also found that zero emission vehicles would result in nearly $170 billion in public health benefits across California. For Annenberg Media, I'm Tatum Larson. LA Metro says the rail line connecting Crenshaw to LA International Airport is getting closer to being finished. Reporter Sofia Gonzalez shows us what small business owners have to say about the new underground metro station in the Crenshaw area. LA Metro celebrated the completion of two-thirds of the Martin Luther King Line, also known as the K Line. This was the first project of its kind, the pilot of the Business Interruption Fund. Over 80% of the small businesses that were in operation when we started are still here. They're still standing. The project extends from the Blue E-Line at Expo Crenshaw Station to the Green C-Line at LAX. The Crenshaw Corridor, Inglewood, and El Segundo will all be connected through the underground metro. Small business owners in the Crenshaw community hope that the K-Line will bring in new business. I spoke with a few of its community members on their thoughts of the metro's impact. I live up the hill. I've been here for over 30 years. And this is a monumental accomplishment. The idea of being in a community that's growing and developing is just good, not only for the spirit, but it's also good for business overall. I grew up in this community. Uh, I used to ride my bike to the mall here. My family opened our first uh, restaurant in 1975, just around the corner on Martin Luther King and Hillcrest. So I've seen the community go through decades of, of changes. It just, it's just really a game changer for the Crenshaw community. Things I love about that line coming through Crenshaw, the low ground, particularly where my business is, it doesn't necessarily uh, interrupt the flow. It does allow people from outside the area to get out of the My hopes for the future of the, of the rail line for Metro is for people who would probably never come to South Central LA, they'll choose to come because they have no excuse not to get down here. For Annenberg Media, I'm Sofia Gonzalez. Tonight, civil rights activists are marking an important moment in U.S. history. President Biden has signed the first ever anti-lynching bill. The Emmett Till anti-lynching bill makes lynching a federal hate crime. President Biden called the act of lynching a terror on American history. Innocent men, women and children hung by nooses from trees, bodies burned and drowned and castrated. Their crimes, trying to vote, trying to go to school, trying to own a business or preach the gospel. False accusations of murder, arson and robbery. Simply being black. The bill is named after Emmett Till. In 1955, two white men murdered the 14-year-old boy for allegedly whistling at a white woman. USC's Director of Student Engagement for the USC Race and Equity Center thinks it's about time. You know, the fact that our federal government has now only recently passed this legislation after, as I understand, upwards of 200 felt attempts over the years, you know, it really represents how far I think our nation has to go in terms of dealing with um, you know, issues re related to race and racism in the country. This bill is the most recent in a series of legislation aimed at advancing racial equality. Congress passed the George Floyd Act last March. The bill focuses on increasing accountability for law enforcement, including restricting certain policing tactics. The House passed the Crown Act earlier this month, otherwise known as creating a respectful and open world for natural hair, 
The bill aims to ensure that race-based hairstyles aren't discriminated against. Yesterday, President Biden signed the Emmett Till anti-lynching bill. Advocates have been trying to pass federal anti-lynching legislation for more than a century. So, Sydney, tell me a little bit about more. Um, how is this law exactly supposed to help prevent hate crimes? Yeah, of course. So um, in my interview with the professor Thompson, he said basically that this bill could act as a deterrent for anyone who might engage in activity that could be considered a hate crime. He also mentioned that the act of lynching looks different from when the term was first coined. And because of this, it's imperative that we have extra measures of protection for those in the African-American community. A high school senior in Pasadena is making history on the gridiron and with every field goal blazing a trail for other hopeful athletes. Reporter David Keeling continues our special series on people who are making a difference in their community. Turn that shit up. From the very start, the very last whistle. Hold your clock, that's a touchdown. They sort of look like USC football players, but they're the Spartans, not the Trojans. They play for La Kenyatta High School. And there's one more difference. The kicker is Shayna Chlorfein. I think it's awesome that she's a role model for so many people, but uh, the, the real gift is that she's just a great person and a great player. Shayna Chlorfein is the first female kicker to score a point on the La Kenyatta sports football team. My parents are super supportive, and actually my dad convinced me to go try out for the team because I was debating it, but I wasn't exactly sure just because it was a totally different environment, and I wasn't sure how I would be in that situation. Now being a part of the football team, Shayna has gained tremendous confidence and believes it is important for women to feel empowered. I feel like this shouldn't be something where like, I am looked at as a role model. I feel like it should be more normal and I feel like women should feel like they're able to do whatever they want to. Shayna's mindset has earned respect from her teammates. We're practicing as a team for PAT. It's just everyone's really supportive and just kind of brings a different feel overall to the team. The support isn't just from her teammates. Not only me, but everybody, just watching her kick would go crazy. Like, everyone was so inspired and just wanted so many good things for her that it made it really fun. In the end, the young trailblazer wants to inspire others to follow their dreams. Just to be confident and to believe in your abilities because that's the most important thing. It doesn't matter what other people think. As long as you think you can do it and you're competitive, then you will be able to do it. An important life lesson from a 17-year-old. For Annenberg Media, I'm David Killing.